This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So let's check out this generator. Got us a carrier, another Generac. Didn't start up. This is an older one. This is uh, some of the ones that first came out that don't have a governor, don't have choke. They don't have anything. You're at the mercy of everything being perfect. So let's take a look and see what happened here. Let's see if we can get this apart. All right. So they said the battery was replaced not too horribly long ago. So hopefully that's not the issue. Now I do know, because this is back when I first started, we used to have problems with the bellows rotting out. But it doesn't look like this one has bellows, but that's not very strong. See that where I didn't even hardly move it? It was just sitting there like that. This is required to get gas into the engine. The downstroke of the piston pulls the fuel in through the air box from that little regulator at the back back here. That regulator has a tendency to stick. This is one of the units that I just don't particularly care for. It's great if it's a gas powered one, but I just don't like it for natural gas and propane because they just have no choke. They don't have no way to really get them going. But I'm going to uh, leave it like that right there on purpose to see what it does. Uh, he said it had no lights at all. So let's look at this fuse, see if it's dead, which does not look like it is. I don't think we're gonna get a whole lot of anything. It's on auto. Manual's not doing anything. There's no lights there at all. They're lighting up, nothing. Let's grab the meter and take a look and see what we got going on. Let's get down here and get these covers off. See if we can get a voltage measurement here. Just use the generic meter for right now. Throw it on DC. Let's see what we've got. Going in for end, zero voltage. What probably happened is the battery charger blew up. Now the battery's dead and probably damaged the battery. So uh, let's go ahead and pop it apart and see what we got. Got our little adapter there. Looks like we need a T27. Go ahead and get that apart. That apart. Pop that off now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check my N1 and N2 coming into the generator. I'm going to grab my other meter. It just this meter is made for AC rough rough measurements. It's not really made for delicate DC and anything else. I'm going to go grab my other meter. All right, so we got 248 volts there. And that's coming over here to our two prongs right there. So we do have high voltage coming into that. Now we need to find the transformer stuff, which this one may not have it actually, now that I think about it. This was kind of a basic little 7KW unit, so this actually might have a charger on the inside. So we can come down here, yeah, millivolts. Same thing here with this, millivolts. Okay, we're gonna check for some shorts here. On the edges of the wires going through. Make sure that's tight. Got that running through there. Low voltage with high voltage. But they seem to let it roll. Let's go into the transfer switch, take a look in there. Let's take a quick look here at the air filter, which is right down here. It's kind of a cartridge, it never goes back. So these don't usually run that much. Yeah, it looks, looks good. So we're coming down here, we've taken the cover off. This is the little battery charger they've got here. It's just a tiny little thing it's for lead acid batteries. You've got one leg coming down here going to neutral. The other leg is on the other side of this fuse. I verified I do have 120 volts coming into it on this leg right here. And here's the power coming out. Now we've already measured outside to see if we had it. So we got one leg, it's on zero which is uh, nature, uh, the common negative terminal. And the other one is on the 12 volts positive. 
your transfer is your 12 volts coming back, or I should say it's your negative voltage coming back to uh, energize this. So what's really weird about the way the generator people did their thing is they wired switches hot with 12 volts and they switched the ground on and off to take it one position or the other. So the transfer switch here, 23, is actually a negative. Uh, it actually grounds, closes the circuit to ground to uh, power the solenoids. Now, this is 230 volts in here. This is 230 volts, 240, 208, depends on where you're at. Don't be getting in here with your hands, acting stupid, and get yourself shocked or whatever. This is purely for entertainment, not anything more. It's not for you to try to get out of calling a service guy or anything like that. It's to help some of the new guys that haven't been on some of these old generators because they don't even cover this in the current generator classes. This model here is long gone and although the principles are the same, it's built a little bit different and not everything's shown. They can figure it out. They've got the books to download, but it's a lot nicer when you can look at it and just do it. We're going to isolate this from the terminals here and check the voltage. So we still have the high voltage powered up to it. Here's the two leads. We put our meter back on DC voltage. Come over to the leads here. There we go. Nothing. So the battery charger has gone bad. This little battery charger is ridiculously priced. If it was my personal one, I would just buy a regular battery charger, very similar to this and not buy the exact one myself personally, but I can't do that because liabilities. So we'll go ahead and unhook the high voltage from there, the neutral one do, and we'll go pick one up. I don't know if we have one at the shop. If we do, great. If not, the video will end here. We were able to get another battery charger here. So we had one at the shop, which is, we don't stock a lot of parts, but we had that. So what I did is I'm gonna unhook my positive. Normally I'd unhook my negative, but I'm gonna have him switch it back when he's done. He works on his own lawnmowers and stuff. So I taped up my positive there. We're gonna let this thing do most of the heavy lifting here. The battery charger had been on for a while, but this is a, a Harbor Freight battery charger and it must not have gotten quite in the 10 amp spot. So it wasn't putting out voltage the whole time I was sitting there getting parts. We're going to let that thing charge. It already kicks over. Uh, the lights off blinked. I showed him how to set the exercise, which was just by holding the button down. And that should work for that part. Let's go in there and get this mounted up downstairs. It's just gonna lay in the box. We got the high voltage there on this side. And then that part there gets put under the prongs. So we've got our red wire right there to 12 volts and we got our black on the common zero. This here is Velcroed on the other one, which it's not going to go anywhere. We'll put that up there, pack it in place when we're done. Got the neutral hooked up there. Power leg, safest thing to do is to pull that fuse. That way it's not live. Oops, didn't have the camera up there. I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing. There we go, that's on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my wire ties out. We'll wire tie this into place and that'll help hold it out of the way of things. We've got the wire tie there. It's helping hold that in place. Got her dated. Got the wire there. It's loose so you can get in there to get to things. It's not touching anything, won't rub anything. This is not a very big generator, like I said. He's got the AC on there, which is really surprising it handles that. I mean, it's only 7kW. But if you stage things and you're not in the middle of a storm, you can get away with it. But if you got the sub pump kicking on, the furnace running, you know, you could have some issues, refrigerator kicking on, just all about staging things. We've got at least a basic charge in there on this uh, battery. Let's see what we've got voltage wise, see where we're at. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be properly charged. So we got that there. We're at 12.3 already, which is kind of, you know, that big charge there. Let's go ahead and run the digital checker on that and see how it's doing. We probably could get away with the two and a half amp charger. That's uh, may not need a lot and going in slow actually would be better for it. Just like with any battery check, you've got to have the battery fully charged before it's going to be accurate. 
we've got it isolated. This is 510 cold cranking amps at uh, zero degrees, I believe. Battery capacity, we've got set up for standard. Got it set for an accurate test. Cold cranking amps is the rating, 510, hit enter. And it's gonna come in at suggest replace. That came in 239. Well, of course, it's gonna come in a little low because the thing is practically not charged. Internal resistance is a little high. I don't know what that's gonna do when the battery comes up to the correct voltage, which is usually 12.3 to 12.5. Resistance may change. You would think it would. If not, the battery was damaged when it went completely dead like it did. They're not obviously built for that. They're not deep cells. That 10 amp there did pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just have him uh, run it off that other one. I don't want him having to take it all apart and stuff. I mean, it just, we're close enough now that I think it's gonna hold out fine. If it was completely dead, I don't think I would want it to do it. Uh, if it was mine, I'd probably let it go on the charger there, but just like anything, you doing it versus someone else, they paid you to come out and do the job. So let's see if we can do as much as we can. Plus that allows us to set the uh, timer and everything else. We got it back on there. Obviously you don't usually unhook the positive because if you're doing the wrenching on it and you hit ground, it's gonna cause a direct short, which could basically blow a chunk of metal in your face, which is generally why we undo the negative. Uh, went ahead and got it hooked back up. That way I don't have to worry about him making that mistake and then saying that we caused it because we told him to do it. The liquidy looking stuff down here is silicone uh, dielectric grease that the last guy put on there to help try to keep some of the um, corrosion and stuff off. Right now we've got the exercise timer. If we hit and hold it now, it should not set because it's not on auto position. So we're gonna have to put it in auto. Gotta hold it. Should start up. Nope, gotta got hold it for 10 seconds. It's been a while since I've had this particular one. There we go. Not too bad. We're on AC voltage. The correct way to set that up is to set it under uh, full load, set your primary string, spring or half a load, half a load and then full load. I forget exactly. It's been forever. So you got your, your primary spring, uh, which is doing most of the heavy lifting right here. Then you have your fine tuning spring at the top. Generally what it was was 61 and a half hertz on the bottom one and 62.5 on the top. And then as it loads up, it's going to drop the... Uh, motor speed because it's going to have a, more of a magnetic field in there and the motor should stop out of around 60 hertz which is generally where you want it at even on some of the newer electronic ones when they first moved, went to the electronic governor some of those would run somewhere around 58 hertz it was just kind of funny they didn't shoot straight for 60. Uh, go ahead and double check his oil and stuff again for him which i think everything should be good he hasn't had any power outages and we just did the service back in November of last year, which is when they replaced the battery. Um, that's why I'm not real key on wanting to trash a battery that's not even a, you know, five, seven, well, eight months old, something like that. So I told him we could always stop back and do a uh, load test and a test on the battery once it comes up to full charge. Uh, right now it's starting up, so I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with what we got. Our voltage is there, our frequency is there. It started up, the exercise is set now. So they should be good to go. And if he has power outages, which he's been having some little 15 second, 10 second ones lately, he'll have power if it doesn't uh, come back on right away. Let's go ahead and get this cover back on there. Watch when you're doing that, because it has a tendency to hit the button there on the breaker. And like that right here. There we go. See how that's underneath there? Make sure it stays on. If that's not on, it won't transfer and it won't let power through anyway. One on auto, so you should have a green light. Like I said, wait for that oil to drop back down. And it's fine. That air conditioner's running, so let's go ahead and test it and make sure it'd be nothing worse than 
power going out and it doesn't, you know, it starts, but it don't transfer. So let's go ahead and do it. We made sure that our switcher is on auto. Let's go in there and pull the fuse. Got my handy dandy fuse puller here. That way we don't knock out the clocks and everything else. We're not gonna surge anything because it's gonna start right up under a load. So we should be good. Let's start this thing. Let's look, see what we're pulling right now. We're pulling nine amps on one leg and 15 on the other. Not the most balanced thing in the world. Once again, not safe to do it like this. But I'm using a fuse puller, so it should start up here and switch over and you'll hear a click. It's running. And it kicked on. Had a little bit of a surge there for a split second. Six amps on that side, it's not real well balanced. That's the only thing that kind of sucks, but the loads that they've got on there. Got freezer and refrigerator, well pump, living room, basement, so there's two there. AC and furnace, they're swapped together. Um, yeah, living room probably don't pull crap, neither does the basement. The freezer and refrigerator, they're on the same uh, loop as the furnace, so if you switch that around, that would probably help out some, but if I did that, then I'm going to change all this stuff. Which looks like here, they literally already switched from well to here, so they might have already tried to balance the load and then things change. We are running on the generator. Let's check our voltage, see where we're at on that. 230 volts. Good deal. Some people don't like you doing it like this. I've done it like this forever. It's the way I like doing it. It'll go through its cool down period and it's going to transfer back. There it did it. Everything's happy go lucky. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, please check the subscribe button down below. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook. Until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one. Later.